Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Hope everyone's doing really well. As you can tell by the title of today's video, I want to share with you my property purchasing experience for my second and third property. I've done a video here on my channel before where I've spoken about the buying process and the experience I had purchasing my first property. So I thought it would just make sense to explain to you guys what the process is like and what I personally went through when I had to go ahead and buy my second and third property. So if you are interested, then please keep watching. Now, before we begin, I do also have an Instagram page as well where I talk about career and personal finance, um, which I will leave here on the screen and also in the description description box down below. I also run a consulting business, help young professionals land their dream jobs. So I'm offering services around one-on-one -on -one consulting to help build a career strategy, help with interview prep. I also do CV reviews as well, cover letters, and I can also review your LinkedIn profile as well. So if you need any of those services at all, I will leave my website down below for you guys to check out. Now let's just get started on today's video. So to give you guys a bit of context, I purchased my first and investment property in February 2020 so this was just before the pandemic hit and a few of the reasons why I opted to invest in real estate or investing in properties is because I wanted to build on my passive income at the time I was working a nine-to-five job and I knew it would be foolish of me to not have other forms of income other revenue streams where I am able to make passive income I thought you know me just relying on my nine-to-five job was just not good enough and I needed to really branch out and that's why I looked into property investing so that, that could help me build my passive income and allow me to potentially be financially free not only this but me just keeping my money in a savings account earning me less than 1% was really not going to do me any good so I resorted to real estate investing because the returns there were about six to eight percent but you may also ask that ETFs also have the same amount of returns if not higher and the reason I sort of opted into real estate investing was because of leverage return and what that is is when you take out a loan from a bank you're able to purchase an investment property but what that means is for me personally how it worked out was that I was able to wait for a period of time and wait for that first investment property to appreciate in value and then I was able to extract some of the equity from that first property to be able to purchase my second and third property without me having to put in a full deposit um, for my next property so that's what I mean you don't need to put in your own money you can just use the bank's money to really grow your wealth over time and I think that's one of the best ways and one of the ways that not many people really speak about a lot of people talk about paying down their mortgage quicker and personally for me I'm really not about that that does not interest me at all whatsoever to pay down my mortgage and what just have only one property under my name I rather have two three four and really build up my investment portfolio so that was definitely one thing that interests me the fact that you had leverage returns okay now I do want to give you a little bit of context about my first investment property but I won't be going into that into too much detail I will leave the video that I have done on my channel previously I'll leave it down below so that you guys can watch that for the first investment property but just quickly I had saved up about thirty thousand um, dollars as my deposit to be able to purchase that investment property and the reason it's so small is because I went with a 10% deposit as compared to a 20% and you guys may ask what about LMI but at the time I was actually working at a banking job so LMI for me was exempt which was one of the perks um, that I was super grateful for working at a bank and you may also ask me as well that 30k for a deposit it seems like it's very low you can't get anything like that here in Sydney and I just want to say that I didn't actually purchase my investment in Sydney because of course it's too expensive to buy in Sydney and I took the advice of my buyer's agent which I will leave in the description box down below um, all of his details so you can check that out but based off of his advice I looked into regional areas and that's just really what worked for my strategy and aligned with my goals and I didn't want to just keep saving my money um, on the side and waiting for that day that I was able to purchase a bigger investment I'd rather have a smaller one so that I can enter the market get started immediately and not have to wait and then just work my way up that way 
Now quickly, I'm just going to go through the buying process here in New South Wales or in Australia. I'm not going to talk too much in detail about this because I have done a video on this previously. And towards the end, I will also be mentioning the costs of everything involved to be able to purchase my second and third property. So stay tuned until the end because I will go through all of the costings that were involved. Okay, so typically the first step involved when you are purchasing your property is that you need to speak to a lender or a broker. The reason and I say this is because you need to know what the figure is or a ballpark figure for your investment property. You don't know how much you can borrow, buy or afford. So speaking to a lender will give you a rough idea as to what you can actually purchase. And then from there, you're able to find the investment property that suits your needs. The lender will then look at your income, your expenses and your serviceability. And then based off of this information that you've provided, they will then give you a figure which you can then take on to your buyer's agent. The second Second step is then to locate your property so this is where I reached out to a buyer's agent because obviously I don't know anything about property I don't want to take that risk you know there's a lot of money involved I rather leave it to an expert someone that knows what they're doing so I resorted to a buyer's agent and they helped me out um, to find out my first property and not only my first one but my second and third one as well and then once you and your buyer's agent have agreed on a property and you're happy with it you then take that to the bank and apply for a loan this will essentially be a pre-approval on your loan. So this process will generally take up to maybe a week or two for you to finally get the pre-approval. Um, this is also a time where you can reach out to your conveyances as well and start to create the contracts as well. This is also a time where you can also place a holding deposit of about 0.25% just so that property is not sold to anyone else and then you can guarantee that that one is held for you. And your conditional approval or the pre-approval that you would have had would be on the basis of a pest and building report. You need to wait for these pest and building reports to come back clean before you do get the unconditional approval. And basically a pest and building report is just checking for termites, checking if the structure, um, the building is really fit and it's not going to you know, collapse or give way anytime soon. So once these come back clear, then you are good to get your unconditional approval. And as part of the unconditional approval, there's just going to be a few final checks that are done by the bank just to make sure that everything is good to go. They may ask for additional documentation, pay slips, just to make sure that you are going to be able to make the repayments and everything is clear and there's not going to be any hurdles um, coming along. So then once this is done, you are then booked in for settlement, which is about six weeks from you receiving the unconditional approval. This is where then the remainder of the deposit amount is then paid off to the seller of the property and this is where the contracts get exchanged and the titles get exchanged and the property on this day is essentially yours. Okay, so that is the typical buying process that's involved here in Australia. Now, that is if you are purchasing your first investment property. Now, I obviously wasn't purchasing my first one. This was my second one and to let you guys know the second property that I did purchase was a duplex so it's obviously two different sides I am receiving rent from both sides but essentially it is one property but it is um, literally considered to be two properties because I'm receiving rent from both um, parties so it is dealt with separately as well I've got separate agents that manage both of the properties so basically what I did was I spoke to the bank when it came time to purchase my second property I spoke to the bank to ask them to do a valuation on my first property because I wanted to see whether that property had actually appreciated over time and if that was the case then I was going to extract some of the equity from the first property to be able to purchase my second property and yes this was actually the case so I did have some funds that had appreciated but the valuation did not come back to what its true sort of price was just because we were in the middle of a pandemic banks and valuers were just very cautious. They didn't want to just, you know, over predict the value. So obviously it was still undervalued, but there was still some equity in there that I could actually extract. So I was able to extract about $15,000 from there to be able to purchase my second property. And that went towards the 10% deposit. So if you are in a similar situation to myself and you've already purchased your first one, you're looking to purchase your second one, I would definitely recommend waiting for a few months just so that you can see 
that the property has actually appreciated. You can speak to your buyer's agent as well and they can let you know some rough figures as to you know whether it is a good time and go ahead and invest into another property. So I got the thumbs up from my buyer's agent letting me know that I had definitely some value there that I could extract. So that's when I went to the bank to ask them and they told me that yes, there were some funds available. Um, this entire process took me about two weeks. So just make sure you give yourself enough time. And then once that's all done, you go through the entire process as per usual to then be able to purchase your properties. So let's move on to now some of the costs that were incurred as part of purchasing my properties. So now just for transparency purposes, I just want to mention that my first investment property um, had actually increased in value by $25,000. Of course, um, at the time we were in the middle of a pandemic, so I was only able to extract a certain amount, which was $14,600. Dollars, but of course now you know a year in advance the property has definitely appreciated even higher in value So I'll be looking to take out more equity from the first one to be able to purchase my fourth one as well So if we get started, so the second property that I purchased was actually listed for $250,000 But with the help of my buyer's agent, we were able to negotiate that down to $237,500 and at the time that rental yield was about 8.5% and rental yield is calculated by the rent multiplied by 52 weeks of the year divided by the purchase price and that's how we got the 8.5 percent so definitely a great return there so what that meant was I had to pay a 10 percent deposit um, 10 percent because I worked at a bank and I didn't have to pay LMI but usually it's 20 percent if you don't want to pay LMI and that ended up being twenty three thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars where fourteen thousand six hundred dollars was extracted from equity so I was able to deduct that from there so if I minus the $14,600 I am left with $9,150 left to pay out of pocket so moving on if we now calculate stamp duty so stamp duty I had to pay about $8,500 along with the conveyancing costs as well which was roughly $1,200 and the pest and building report came to about $1,000. So all up that came to a total of about $19,850, which was my out of pocket expenses. And of course you do need to factor in buyer's agency costs as well, if you are looking to get a buyer's agent. So a lot of you guys may think that, that is a lot of money to put out of your pocket, but that's only $20,000. And of course, at the time it was in the middle of the pandemic. So valuations were not accurately reflected. If I was to go ahead and do the same this time around, I'll definitely not have to pay a single cent out of my pocket. So that's a little bit of a breakdown of all of the costs involved, what the buying process looks like. If you're looking to purchase your second or third property, and that was essentially my experience. In terms of some of the learnings that I wanna share with you, um, just reflecting back on my journey, being able to purchase those properties, I just wanna share with you some insights that could help you guys as well if you are looking to embark upon this journey. Personally for me, I had no interest whatsoever in you know doing my own research to buying a property. I don't know anything about the space and I don't wanna take that risk. As said, there's a lot of money that you're playing around with so I don't wanna take that risk. I wanna leave it up to an expert and that's why I resorted to a buyer's agent. I would definitely recommend this because I know unless you wanna spend hours of you know research, you still may leave some things out so I think it's just too much of a risk for me to personally be taking that so that's why I resorted to a buyer's agent the second tip that I want to share with you guys is I know a lot of us think that we're not ready and we can't really enter the market but I usually think that you know we may think we need a certain amount and we keep sort of saving you know up to fifty thousand a hundred thousand dollars and we still think that you know that's not the right amount but I think speaking to a mortgage broker or a lender even if you don't have any money saved up would just be a good idea to really see what your borrowing capacity could be like even if you don't have any money at all I think it's just great to have a ballpark figure they can you know evaluate your expenses your income and see what you can actually purchase and then you can work towards that goal into achieving your savings but also if you've got you know I think thirty to forty thousand um, dollars I think is also a good start as well just to speak to someone to see where you're at and whether you need more or whether you're actually ready to get started I think a lot of us actually underestimate how much we actually have and then um, you generally tend to find that you're actually already good to go so I definitely think speaking to someone about this can definitely help and 
and thirdly I think for me it's been good that it's sort of been drilled down in me you know from my friends my family my parents um, letting me know telling me that it's not always about you know paying off your mortgage as quickly as possible it's more about you know leveraging that debt so that you can expand your portfolio you can accumulate more properties uh, just by using you know existing funds which have been provided by the bank to purchase more properties and I feel like that just is such a smart way to build on your wealth and build on that passive income and really work towards you know financial freedom so I think yeah a lot of us are told to pay down our mortgage but I think we've got to switch it up and think about it differently so guys that's everything that I wanted to share with you about my property purchasing experiences as mentioned I'll leave my first investment property video down below in case you're interested and a few other investment videos that I have done here on my channel which I think are very beneficial for you guys to check out in case you are getting started here in Australia but that's it guys I think I'm just gonna leave it here and I'll catch you guys in my next video thanks guys